Now this morning I wanted to share one of the little things that we've learned. First off I wanted to show uh, the people that have never used these, they're called Curvy Girl 90 degree valve stems. These we got to match the trim on the bike, well almost match anyway. But what I have to do, and I wanted to, I wanted to lay out how I do this, it may or have, may, have, may not be of any value, who knows. Uh, in either way it's always, it's always fun watching me suffer along here. But anyway, I wanted to mount the valve stems in here, which is kind of a straightforward job. It's going to take me 10-15 minutes, it, and it's a relatively simple, straightforward job with instructions. The only thing you can do wrong with these is over-tighten them and snap them. But, in, in the, the, the issue of using time management, I don't want to waste the time and do this job and then preheat the tire. What I want to do, and this is what, this is basically what I wanted to show, is take the wheel out. I want to take the tire that we're going to mount on that rim, and I'm going to try to show how to mount it without using any tools. Now, if you take good old-fashioned Gorilla Tape, this is not duct tape, it's Gorilla Tape, and you pinch the tire like so. Again, this tire's already been mounted. The tire at room temperature, which right here is about 68 degrees, well, you know, yeah, we could get this on and I've done it, but there's a way to make it really easy and we have this little heat box which Mark has graciously just returned. One of the problems people have when you're working alone is how do you get the tape on the tire conveniently? Or you try and you wind up getting two layers of tape in the middle, I've done that. When I mounted the GS tire I realized the wider the rim is, and these 750 rims are relatively wide, it's easier to do a wide rim than a narrow rim. So little things we've picked up along the way, but this is the trick, that at least trick, that the thing that I found works great. If you're going to use this method, get the tape to stick to one side here. Now normally if you were sitting at a table, you'd be bending this or you'd have some incredible way to, uh, well, difficult anyway. But this is a good way to do it. And just If you pay, pay strict attention. You don't really have to pay strict attention, I'm just kidding. Now once you put this part over, here's what I found really works. Let this part go all the way over. Now, here's the whole thing. This is the part when we put it in a heat box. I don't want this to release. I don't want this to release. And I only want to wind up with one layer of tape here. For the simple reason, when I drop this onto the tire, it's going to drop on <coughs> relatively easily. I only need four. I found four to be plenty. I tried doing eight and sixteen and whatever, unnecessary. But then when you take this tape off and it's not mounted to the rim yet, I cut this or release it and make sure all the tape comes out because if a little piece stays in here, you wind up with an air leak and of course you have to unseat the bead and just extra work. Anyway, the whole idea of this, I'm going to do this in two parts. I wanted to do it without a camera cut. Whenever I see things on TV with a camera cut, I wonder. I just think, well, okay, maybe they used a little Photoshop. And since I'm so incompetent with computers, there's no such thing as Photoshop. But now to press that down, if you if you don't have a a nice big beefy friend around, I got plenty of beefy friends, by the way, and you know who you are. Too much pepperoni. Anyway, if you do four, four seems to be enough. Now sure, if you have a friend with a tire machine and you don't mind scratching your rims, well, everything's fine. But to mount the tire, this is the only way I know of, because I've got painted rims and I've got a lot of hours in those rims. And I just don't like scratching things. Or if you have Marchesini wheels or something, you don't want to scratch them. This is one way to do it. Hold that. This gets pretty simple. It isn't, isn't it real complicated. Make sure these are down nice and tight. Again, we're into this about two or three minutes. There's virtually no effort. We're inside the house. And of course, now the trick is, I have this box that I made and it, how to make it is on one of the videos from this channel. And put the tire right in there. The tire is now at 68 degrees. You never want to mount a tire that's frozen. You just put 
an unnecessary strain on it. Now Mark was the last one to have the box, so I hope the bulb still works. Good boy, Mark. Okay. Bulb is tight. Now, if I were to check over the next 10 minutes with a digital thermometer, what I'd find out is that tire is going to get, it's going to get to be 70, 80, 90. At about 120 degrees, it gets oh, nice and soft. At about 140 degrees, that tire should mount right onto the rim. As soon as I put the air in, but now here's the whole thing. The time saving here is pretty good. While, and that's why I'm doing this in two parts. While this is basically sitting warming up, it's gonna take 15, 20 minutes, depending on how hot it is in the house. It's, it's pretty nice in here now, it's 68 degrees. But in the meantime, I got my rim and I've got these things and boy, the reason I like these, I like to have 90 degree offsets because I hate getting my hand through the double disc brakes and through back in the back to get the, to, to check the air. And I check the air pretty much every time I ride the bike. So these, even though they're, thir they're 30 bucks a set, these are well worth the investment to me. Now, we'll come back to this video, what I'm gonna do. I'll have a cup of coffee, mount up my 190 degree valve stem. The tire should be nice and warm by then. Put a little bit of soap on. You only need to put the soap on one side of the rim. And I'll try to show that in real time without a camera cut, if I can. We've done it before. It's not a magic trick. Other people have done it on the internet. I just wanted to show that you can do this relatively easily. And it puts, to, since the whole idea is this is a, a rim that I've painted. Now it's not powder coated. And it wouldn't matter if it's powder coated, polished or what. But it's, it's right now, it's, it's really a nice shape. I don't want to have a big chunk missing when I'm all done. Anyway, we're going to do this. Part two will be 15, 20 minutes from now. I'll shoot the second part.